Welcome. I want to do this video on what exactly is a law firm? What can you expect from a law firm? And how do you choose between law firms? This is a major topic of discussion that anybody who's thinking in any area of the law in hiring a lawyer, they should look at. Not all law firms are the same. They don't all operate the same way. They all don't have if they even have policies and procedures, they don't have them all in a uniform fashion. So who you choose as your law firm can be very important. Is it just in name that they say they're a law firm or are they really a bunch of individual attorneys acting under the umbrella of a name of a law firm? Or is there some cohesive philosophy in the law firm in terms of how they go about conducting their business in order to get optimal results for a client? Now this applies to any law firm in any area of the law, but I'm going to concentrate in particular, obviously, on criminal law because that's where I'm an expert and that's where our law firm is an expert with all the attorneys in it. And, and this has developed in my mind over a career about what a good law firm really means, not just to call ourselves one, but to actually be one. What does it mean? Well, like I said, all philosophies of firms aren't the same. When we started the Bianchi Law Group, for example, we wanted to have first, like, what are our core values. So what is the law firm that you're looking at? What are their core values? For us, we came to very quickly the conclusion that the words courage, compassion, and commitment were the core values that myself and my law partner, Dave Bruno, had, and that we wanted to make sure that everything we did in our law firm surrounded those core values. The courage to fight on behalf of your clients. Now, this may seem like an obvious thing, but it's not. If you drill down and you're looking at a law firm, there are individuals that we referred to in, when we were prosecutors, there were defense lawyers that we referred to as hand holders. In other words, those were lawyers who, and this is no disrespect to any lawyer, it's just a philosophy. And, and, you know, people ap operate differently. The hand holder represented, in our opinion, a majority of the lawyers who took fees with clients and, and they were good and skilled lawyers and they gave advice to their clients. But they weren't real, in the courtroom, strong litigators. They weren't people who we were worried, as prosecutors are concerned, could quote unquote, draw blood from us inside the courtroom. Would they recognize legal issues? And if they did recognize those legal issues, were they willing to fight for their client? Now, this may sound like people come away with the idea that all lawyers are fighters, and that just simply is not true. The handholder has a skill set towards negotiations bargaining. And sometimes that's the way to go even with the most aggressive kind of lawyers. But that's only after you fought the fight and squeezed out as much as you could, that maybe a resolution by way of a plea agreement is a good idea. But the question is, have you squeezed out as much as you can to get an optimal plea agreement for the client? So the handholder is one kind of lawyer. The aggressive lawyers, the ones that I really respected greatly, were those attorneys who I knew were fighters that were smart, they pick up legal issues. And I respected as a prosecutor that I knew they were gonna go into the courtroom and file motions and they were capable cross examiners. They were good in front of a jury. They weren't afraid to try a case in front of a jury. Fear is a big factor in the law firm that you try. I mean, it's an intimidating environment for you. It's an intimidating environment for attorneys too. Do you have the kind of attorney that's willing to fight that fight, especially when you're a criminal defense attorney, where you have the government against you and you have maybe an indictment against you and a grand jury has charged you with crimes in that indictment and you have to go before a judge. A lot of times your defense lawyer is the only person in that courtroom that's standing between you and your liberty. You certainly don't want to take that time to have a lawyer, in my opinion, who's a hand holder only. Because the fact of the matter is, prosecutors are only going to respect, in my opinion, those lawyers who couldn't, as we used to say, go to the dance. Those lawyers who were not afraid to fight, to cross-examine, they were skilled, and they weren't afraid to be in front of a jury. Those kind of lawyers were more damaging to us or more capable of being damaging to us as prosecutors because they were fighters, just like a fight on the street. They were willing to put their hands up and throw punches and kicks and fight the fight. So those lawyers typically got the better plea agreements down the road, or actually, if it had to go to trial, certainly want to put that in the hands of a very good trial to attorney. So that's why courage was a core value to us, because as certified criminal trial lawyers, 
um, in New Jersey. There are only 250 out of 98,000 lawyers. The Supreme Court has said we are experts in that. And that skill set that we have as former prosecutors, certified criminal trial lawyers, my partner and I said, this is what we want to be able to have to get optimal benefits, the courage to fight in the court. The other thing is compassion. One of the reasons why myself and my partner got trained by Dr. Brene Brown, who is the author of The Gifts of Imperfection, and many others like Rising Strong and very other books, we got trained by her actually in San Antonio, because we also knew that we were dealing with human beings who were broken, a lot of times mentally ill and addicted, a lot of times otherwise very good law-abiding citizens that had, as we say, a bad night or did something that could have catastrophic circumstances uh, in their life, rippling effects in their life. And those individuals, we want to have a better way of communicating with them. Uh, I do believe deeply in the philosophy of this law firm, as my partner does as well, that it's not just good enough to get optimal legal results. It's important to understand we're dealing with human beings along the way. And we have to have the compassion to understand that this journey is a difficult one. Hopefully, your lawyer is going to find it difficult as well. It's hard as a lawyer to be dealing with people when you see the collateral consequences that crimes are having on them, their jobs, and their families. So you have to have courage, but you have to also have compassion. And those two things ultimately are going to lead to commitment. Do you have a commitment to the client? Do you have a commitment to maybe even something bigger than the client, the profession itself? The fact that it is through the adversarial system, as we call it, that the best opportunity at getting a just result can exist. It doesn't mean that you'll always get a great result, but if you have a lawyer who's compassionate and you have a lawyer who has courage and you have a lawyer who's committed, it puts you in the best opportunity to get as just a result as you can. So courage, compassion, and commitment are core values we share. What are the core values of the other law firm? Do they even have core values? And the reason that that's important is from that point forward, once we know we're going to be courageous, once we know we're going to be compassionate, and once we know we're going to be committed, we can then put the pieces of our law firm together in order to exemplify, put into action those things in order to achieve those goals. So when you're looking at a law firm, don't just look about a lot of names on a letterhead. Are they working together as a team? We were very clear that the only way we can get optimal results is if we work with a team, just like we did when we were prosecutors. Not give files out to a bunch of individual attorneys, say, hey, have a great day and good luck with that file, like a lot of law firms do. And I've actually practiced in an environment where you're kind of on your own all the time. I wanted to have a more collegial environment where, like we did as prosecutors, we're able to discuss our cases, go over all of our cases, get differing opinions. And that is why we huddle three days a week with our entire staff. This is getting part to that commitment piece. The courage is not an issue. We'll go into court and we'll fight, at least the attorneys that we hire. That's what we want. We want to make sure you're courageous. Are you a fighter? If you're not, if you're one of the many that are not, you're not going to make it in as an attorney. Now, the commitment piece to that is to be able to say, we all work together. Everybody from myself, my law partner, and all of our staff, from the support staff, the office manager, the paralegals, legal assistants, and every attorney meet three times a week to huddle over all of our clients' cases. Some people would say, is that a good thing from a business point of view? I think it is, actually. I know that they look at it simply from the time commitment that's involved in that, because those meetings go for an hour and a half to two hours long, three times a week. But you cannot avoid the reality that it makes us better lawyers because we all don't agree necessarily about how to approach a case. And somebody always comes up with an idea. Hey, I had a case and I did it this way. And we incorporate everyone's ideas. And moreover, when we go into execute those ideas, just like we did when we were prosecutors, since our paralegals and legal assistants and office staff are all on the call, they know exactly why we're doing what we're doing and that leads to not having to take a significant amount of time to keep repeating things over and over again. So those huddles to us, we call them BLGCLEs, that stands for Continuing Legal Education, uh, because they are really, really instructive. Everything from the experience level that I and my partner have as trial attorneys to uh, our appellate lawyer that we have, which is very unique and we're very proud of. We're putting those pieces together and our associate and senior associate attorneys in the office all of them are coming together and gelling into bringing what we hope to be an optimal result for the client.
So that firm philosophy with regard to that is very important. Another thing that I always ask, uh, if a client can't afford us, I give them the nine tips on how to hire a good criminal defense lawyer. And I do this because I know it can be a daunting thing to go out there, especially if you're on Google, and making sure you're not just getting a great marketer. You don't need a great marketer. A great marketer is good for the business. A great marketer may not necessarily be good for the client. That doesn't necessarily mean they're not. But you got to make sure that that firm has the three aspects of any business, which is marketing, sales, and production, quality results. And in order to get quality results, I shake my head all the time. Again, maybe this is coming back from my experience as a prosecutor, running a huge law enforcement agency, the largest one in the county. Given that responsibility by the governor was a really tremendous thing. There were 44 police agencies, multiple municipal prosecutors, and your own county prosecutor's office that you had to run that had millions and millions of dollars of a budget and multiple people. Well, that ship has to be steered in a certain direction. And there are two ways to do it. You could just kind of cross your fingers and hold your hands or hold the hands of other people and hope it'll all be okay. Or you can have policies and procedures, which we were very specific about when we came in there. You can't have a system prosecutors offering different plea offers and random you know, personalities making decisions. You have to be consistent with how you go about things in order to deliver excellent results. And we carry that same philosophy over to the Bianchi Law Group as well. So we have policies and procedures that are in place with every aspect of our business, including, and more importantly, the production of uh, getting subpoenas out, making sure discovery letters go out, making sure there's motions are done, making sure there's checklists of various things that have to be done with regard to making sure we don't miss anything and that every case is handled the same, with the same consistency, with the same level of excellence. Now, as you can imagine, when you have different people, no matter how good they are, if the firm, if the law firm is not operating with policies and procedures, things get lost. And when things get lost, clients get hurt, in my opinion. A lot of people are trying to figure out what law firm they want to go to. I think this is something that they often don't look at that I think is really important. And that's in the nine tips of how to hire a good criminal defense lawyer that we give out to so many people in order for them to find a good lawyer. A lot of this will be in there. What is the firm philosophy? Now, it's one thing when you're giving your good, hard-earned money to an individual, you want to have the comfort level to know that those individuals are going to be working in a uniform fashion in order to try to achieve optimal results for you. So knowing overall what the firm's philosophy is and the nine tips, those are the things we give out to people. So that if you're not going to use the Bianchi Law Group or you can't afford us, at least you'll have a measurement, a yardstick on how to hire an excellent lawyer. I'm always saying to people, no lawyer can guarantee you a result. Any lawyer that's guaranteeing you a result when you're initially meeting them, when they don't have the discovery, they haven't had an opportunity to speak to the prosecutor, they haven't had the time to be able to go over with you the statutes, the law, the sentencing code, so that you can become an informed client and is telling you right from the beginning they know how a case is going to end, I would be extremely suspicious if I wouldn't run away from that scenario. Lawyering takes a lot more. No two cases are the same. No two prosecutors are the same. No two instances are the same. It takes skill and it takes a lot of review and a lot of experience in order to get that optimal result. But if you are comfortable with the law firm you choose or the lawyer that you choose within that law firm, what we want to be able to say is that at least at the end of the day, regardless of what the result is, you won't be looking in the rear view mirror of your life wishing I had had a better attorney. If you can deal with the fact that I had the best legal advice that I could get and I'm going to deal with whatever the consequences are then you're going to be in a good spot. And the number one way to do that is we always say, remain silent and hire the best law firm that you can afford. Lawyering and the law firm and how the law firm operates makes a difference. I hope it was instructional. Thanks for listening. And we have more videos. We go to our YouTube channel and check them all out. Check the links below for any other information that may be relevant. And of course, our team of former prosecutors at the Bianchi Law Group, because again, our firm philosophy, only for the prosecutors, we'd love to be able to help you out. And even if we can, at least put you in the right direction. Be well.